The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. Hello, All can right. you hear me? Urban, Urban Hacker, Urban you have Urban been added Hacker. to the stage. How's it going? Yes. It's doing great. It's doing great. Um, yeah, so thanks for inviting me on, on the show. Um, I'm a big listener, and um, it's quite an honor to be today with you. And yeah, we. I, I think it's funny how we kept missing each other between the emails, and uh, but finally we, we can speak, and... I'm, I'm sure it's going to be interesting for, for everyone listening. Um, yeah, yeah. Apologies for not uh, establishing communication sooner. We just get a, we get a lot of people coming coming at us from all different places, email, DMs. But yeah, for anybody listening, the best way is email with a good subject line because then we, we, will, we will keep it organized and eventually get to you. Uh, but yeah, man, thanks for jumping out today. And uh, uh, give, give us a quick little little background about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, so my background is um, I um, studied cybersecurity and I was a cybersecurity uh, training officer um, and also a video game developer, uh, which is kind of an odd combination, if, if you ask me. And um, I, I have a lot of experience just, uh, you know, uh, training people, making sure they, they comply with uh, the best practice in, in cybersecurity at, at companies. And what I've noticed over the years is, um, as I was advising, you know, from employee to to, to CEO, I I started to become more and more cypherpunk and and basically a bit hijack my own presentation to suggest people to use the strongest possible encryption and the best tool I could I could imagine, um, because I felt like it was necessary, um, and you know I was seeing that more and more. Um, I mean, and and even like in the past few months, it, it seems to accelerate, like this push for for tyranny. And um, yeah, I I wanted to make sure that people would have the best tool possible. But I've done it in a corporate environment, so I had to disguise it a bit. Um, so yeah, that's that's in in short my background. And I think today we are going to discuss a bit more about Tor. Uh, and why should uh, everyone using Monero should also run a Tor relay, which I think is important, especially uh, bridges to to help uh, people bypass censorship. And I know it's weird how it all clicked together because um, I'm I'm helping with a platform called Escape the Technocracy uh, .com, which is a website where where we are selling um, tutorials and and like a course explaining. Uh, basically the like from zero to maximum uh, about privacy and we wanted to do um, a segment about mesh networks and censorship bypass and then at the same time all of this thing was happening in brazil and we're like oh my god we, we need to we need to be quicker with our with our content and the plan is to have a full uh, tutorial explaining exactly what are the different tour nodes and how you can run one and um, in a safe way, right? Because you can also run them and get in trouble depending on how you do. So that's a bit my background where, where I come from. And in this platform, escapethetechnocracy.com, we also have a module about Monero where we explain people how to use XMR Bazaar because um, in my Amazing. opinion, it's the best way. Ah, thanks. Uh, well, but it's the, you know, like all the, all the traditional on and off ramp are completely uh, under control and they either delisted Monero or are in the process of doing so. And it's just the best uh, way, right, to acquire them in a, in a peer to peer uh, fashion. Yeah, so that's. Um, yeah, man, uh, that, that's fantastic, man. I, I love that you, you guys are doing that. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, right? The best way to obtain it without KYC or AML is to work for it, <laughs> trade something for it, uh, provide a good in services for it, treat it like money and earn it. Um, earn it. You can earn it as anonymously as you, as you pretty much like using XMR Bazaar to provide goods and services to people around the world. You could do 
you know, you could do graphic artist consulting from, from the other side of the world to wherever your customer is and, and receive payment anonymously in Monero. So yeah, that, that, I love that you, uh, you guys are, are out there talking about that before, before we jump into the tutorial, which I think is going to be fantastic. Um, is, is Monero, you know, give us a little bit more just about your Monero store. I mean, are you, are you into, are you talking about other cryptos as well, or have you pretty much found your way to Monero as, as being the one that people should be focusing on? Yeah, in, increasingly, I think uh, Monero should be the one that, that people should be focusing on. I think you you say that uh, better than, than anyone. Um, initially, I mean, I was big into, into Bitcoin, uh, you know, in um, when, uh, we also what happened in 2020 and I had so many friends, you know, I was basically, you know, the, the guy, um, like talking, you know, a bit the conspiracy guy, you know, with, with my friends. And then during 2020, they were like, Oh, Herban, now we see, we see what, what you were saying, you know, it, it becomes clear. And, um, initially I was, I was big on Bitcoin because, you know, I thought, well, uh this is kind of the, like the biggest one this is probably the first one that uh, anyone heard heard about and i was a, a user of uh privacy tool like samurai wallet and, and others and increasingly we we've seen i i would say that bitcoin is captured you know um no one really cares about the original uh cypherpunk uh, mindset and I was aware of Monero uh, simply because of my uh, background in cybersecurity because I knew I knew about it from from uh, from this right and I I don't know I always liked the project but I, I was never really involved into it but yeah with the shutdown of of Samurai Wallet and basically in in a few weeks having um, Many wallets just either shutting down or, or, or deciding to not serve uh, the US. Um, I was like, okay, I, I guess uh, I guess now it's it's Monero. Now I still like Bitcoin and I still want Bitcoin to succeed, but Monero is just easier. And you know, let me tell you something, uh, Doug. We on the website we accept Monero by default. So like when you go on the website and you want to pay for any items that we are selling. The first option that you get is Monero because we believe in it and we want like, uh, of course, you can also pay with fiat and, and other um, and, and Bitcoin. But we want to encourage people to use an actual digital peer to peer cash. Uh, and I'm not in here for the gold or for the whatever. I think this is the most important role. Like you need first people using it. And um, if you look at most of the big decisions that were taken in, in Bitcoin, like on, on their own, they are like, I'm not sure how to say, I don't want to sound too much into conspiracy theory, but like any decision taking alone is like, okay, yeah, you know, it could be one or the other, but if you put them together, almost none of them were to benefit merchant adoption. And when I mean merchant adoption is not using, you know, uh, Coinbase uh, payment or, or, or Binance wallet. It's actual self custody, uh, sovereign way to onboard merchant. And uh, you have this whole culture of not using it, uh, which I, I mean, I get it. It's important to save money. But on the other side, you also need to support uh, people who, who are like the, the foreigner and who we go ahead and, and try like the precursor to, to, to this digital revolution. So right now I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, in, into Monero just for, for those reasons alone, but I, I still like Bitcoin and for other crypto, I follow them from, you know, um, I'm always very skeptical, uh, about, about this, but I like some of those projects where they are trying to build like dark I think your interview with, uh, Amir was, was amazing. And, there are certainly certain interesting things, but you know, those are not uh, ready yet. I feel to like um, ask people to start using them and and things like this. So yeah, that's that's a bit my view on on cryptocurrencies. 
Fantastic, man. Fantastic. So you think that's kind of generally what has happened with regards to samurai users and, uh, you know, have they, have most of them moved on to Monero with the shutdown of samurai? You being one of them, is that kind of the sense that you're getting? What is that the, the what, yeah. what's happening on the ground? I mean, obviously I cannot speak for, for other people, right? But there were already a lot of crossover uh, between the, the two communities. And I think they were building uh, shortly uh, before uh, getting shut down, they were building like uh, atomic swap that you could directly swap, um, sorry, from their wallet uh, to Monero. I, I'm not sure exactly how, how it worked. I, I never used it, but I think they were trying to build bridges but between the two communities. Um, I I think Bitcoiners should just care more about privacy. Like um, it it's a pity that like you know you think you have oh this great money that is you know going up forever in value, but if it cannot be used in a private way, then it means it can be frozen and confiscated, and then all you're accumulating is is completely worthless in in my opinion. So yeah, I'm I'm not sure about others, but there is certainly, I feel like, a shift um, of people that I would never have imagined accepting uh, Monero that now I've started, you know, to put, uh, to say, hey, now we accept Monero. And, and I think it's great. I think it's great. And what I tell often people is, or what I used to tell people is, look, the, the financial system is kind of sinking, you know, it's kind of like the Titanic, right? Um, the, the 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 flooding is going on and you know the pumps are are pumping but they are not fast enough to go against the massive amount of debt that we have and for a long time i thought that my safety raft my, my like my safe boat was was bitcoin but for me monero is the flare you know in in case just in case uh bitcoin doesn't work it's good to have a backup and and i think people should uh, everyone should use Monero just to see how it works. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's how I would phrase it. Sounds like you fit in here pretty well, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I told you, agree, I'm, agree I'm a big listener. Yeah, agreeing with everything you have to say. And uh, yeah, it's if, if we use it, we win. That's, that's literally the theme of the Monero Topia conference. I think that's a great meme. talking to Francisco Arctic Mine the other day and we we're going over the chain analysis video that leaked a big part of that conversation was around the fact that not only is full chain membership proofs going to be something that prevents um, chain analysis, but the growing adoption and usage of and, and scaling of Monero itself will also not only make it a, a greater utility in terms of more people accepting it, but effectively will make it more private and anonymous as more people more people use it. So if we use it, we win. And it, it... Yeah, totally. I would uh, totally agree with you on that. You know, I, I listened to your uh, episode where, where you went through the chain analysis video and um, what I found interesting is, uh, if you remember, the first time I contacted you was to discuss about uh, Whirlpool and, and Wasabi. And as I was preparing the show, I tried to load in a blockchain analysis tool, or a Wasabi transaction, and also like Whirlpool. And you know, those are so huge when, when you start to expand all the graphs, uh, all the possible graphs. Uh, and my computer were just running out of RAM and, and, and the cloud service I was using had trouble. And I joked and I said, you know, we, we are winning because we make their computer run out of memory <laughs> to just load this ginormous uh, transaction graph. Um, but it's funny that uh, it seems that Arctic Mine uh, agrees with that, that it's also a viable strategy, you know, by just having more people using it, it's way more data and any more data that you try to extract from it is going to be extremely hard and it's going to cost you a lot of research. And I found this very interesting because I, I noticed it myself when, when I was doing 
some uh, on-chain research uh, for, for the show that we were supposed to have. Speaking of that, um, I was actually curious because I saw that episode too. And so Arctic Mines said that we should have like, he wants to see like Ethereum level transactions. And I actually had to go look that up. It's over a million transactions per day on average, by the way. So we need to, what, 10, 20 XR transactions to get there. Which we will. I'm certain we will. Yeah, I think uh, you know, like we like we're saying, Monero has real world utility. So as as the transactions go up, they're not going to come back down because it's people that are actually using it for real things. I think once we start to see um, apps be created in the space that that become uh, widely used. We'll see transaction volume grow with that. Obviously, things like XMR Bazaar, people using it for purchases, but also things like XMRChat.com, uh, you know, sending super chats, using using uh, the the ability to send super small transactions for a fraction of a cent. So once 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 apps and services that you know uh, tie into that utility start taking off, I think that's when we'll really start to see transaction volume grow beyond it just being traded on, you know, centralized exchanges. Um, you know, um, it's one of the thing that um, I had a lot of friends using also Samurai and mainly because, because of me. And then they were like, oh, Herban, it was shut down. What should we do? And my first answer is use Bitcoin in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. Just having people using it this way makes a natural mixing, right? It naturally adds uncertainty on what's going on. And this is why I think Monero is, is quite good at, is that you are trying to encourage um, real adoption, as in people exchanging real stuff, uh, goods and services uh, for Monero. And I like the slow growth mindset. I mean, of course, we. We want it to be faster somehow, but I think it's a, it's a natural, uh, slow and steady uh, growth of the network, uh, which is um, key in in my opinion for for the success compared to you know this craziness. I mean, you see now in Bitcoin where th they think like Fediment and and Show Me an eCash are are going to be the solution. And I mean, Samurai was never custody the fund of anyone. You know, Wasabi was never is never custody the fund of of anyone. Um, I don't know how they hope that you know Show Me and Cash are not going to get shut down as well. Uh, to, to me, this is a pipe dream, and it's it's a bit of I don't know. Yeah. Um, should we move to Tor? Uh, I mean, I can discuss about pretty much any cybersecurity topic you want, but um, you are you are the the master of the show here. Yeah, we we could do that. Let me ask you uh, one more samurai wallet question. I, I was talking to somebody about it the other day, and you know, I never followed it too closely because I was always just using Monero, right? Um, but when you know the the, the drama happened. Uh, you know, I was I was really kind of looking into it on a deeper level. Um, but I was talking to somebody the other day who I thought was was really kind of well versed with with Samurai. He was saying Samurai Wallet didn't collect any fees. Is that true? I thought they did collect fees. I know no, it's not I mean, custodial. But... I know it's open source. But fees were collected for usage of certain features on Samurai. Correct? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. They they had premium feature. Um, to my knowledge, they had two uh, main features that were, were were collecting fees. Uh, they had uh, ricochet, which right. is you know the one where you send to your it's like churning in Monero. You send to yourself like one, two, three time, uh, and then they also had the whirlpool fee. And this is for two reasons. One of them was obviously funding the development of the wallet, but also as a way to avoid spam. Um, because just like in Monero, you could do a black marble attack. You could also do something similar with Whirlpool. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, no, no, they were they were collecting fees. Right, um, and that, and that was will... in in the in the um, you know in the indictment. I think they yeah they stated something like four million dollars or something in in fees that were collected, and that ultimately is was part of the issue, right? Um, like granted, we don't know how how much further the government's going to go. 
maybe maybe whether you're collecting fees or making revenue won't even matter it will just be are you provide are you somehow connected did you did you did you play a role in the creation of a service that can be used for money laundering like that's literally yeah. the next step they would have to take but uh with with samurai i think you know that the obvious issue was that they were directly profiting from the use of this tool um but yeah i just wanted to clarify that because i talked to somebody i was dming with them i mean unless i i wasn't picking up on their sarcasm or something and i thought they were very well versed in samurai was making the argument that they don't even collect fees he was like they just made money off of you know selling t-shirts and stuff i was like what no they were they were collecting fees um and no, it's no, no, no. Yeah, yeah you know with with xmr bazaar we're, we're intentionally going out of our way to not collect any fees related to any transactions that are taking place on the on the service all the all the transactions are completely peer-to-peer xmr but does not bizarre does not participate in them in any way or collect a fee and i think that's important for yeah. people to realize um you know when they're trying to build tools in this in this area in this arena but and, you know I've, maybe I've, I've been a bit black pilled but I think they will just like, if you make a successful tool, even if you don't collect any fee, they, they will just come after you, you know, for so long, the, the boundary was, is it custodial or non-custodial? And I believe that the reason why non-custody was quote unquote allowed is because they didn't believe it was possible to make a true strong with like strong obfuscation, zero link protocol with like purely non-custodial and, and 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 then you know people found way around and and they got in trouble so i i don't think the theory i mean you know if you send something by the post office they are they are also pro are profiting right you you pay for the the stamp you pay for the the delivery and then if you send some threatening letter to someone who oh, look the postal system is you know uh, profiting from criminal using it that's a bullshit argument I, I think this is bullshit, but um, yeah, for sure. Um, let's let's see what what will happen. Uh, I yeah. Um, are you are you a fluent yeah. are you a fluent Spanish speaker? Yes, yeah, so it's uh, it's funny that you ask me. Um, when I speak about technical stuff like this, I have a hard time to do it in Spanish because when I speak with uh, my family in Spanish, we, we don't speak about cryptocurrencies. So it's okay. funny, like wh when when I do presentation, it's just, I don't know, the vocabulary is different somehow. So uh, I stick to English just because I want to make sure that I, I give my best performance possible. Um, yeah, reason, reason but, yeah. I'm asking because, uh, you know, I was, I was looking at your work and your podcast and obviously listening to you today. Uh, I think you're, you're doing a great job. Um, explaining the importance of privacy tech, and then you have the, the you, you've you've studied these things on a deeper level, and I think you're doing a good job explaining them. Uh, so I was going to say, potentially, if you wanted to come down to Monerotopia, uh, help run a workshop, or even maybe do a presentation in, in Spanish, because we're going to have a Spanish <laughs> section devoted to it. Uh, we're gonna have people do so, like Monero 101 in Spanish. I'm just I'm throwing I'm throwing the invite out there and doing a doing a talk on Tor, which I know you're gonna get to today, could also be a great uh, workshop. So my my plan, uh, or at least initially when when we discuss <laughs> each with our own <laughs> except for you know with like one day uh, offset between each message. Yes. My plan is today to talk about Tor and to answer any question that you might have and to explain a bit the basics about why Tor is important, but Fantastic. to not be, you know, to keep it to, to keep it uh, friendly for a, a podcast, right? Okay. And then on Monerotopia, uh, so I've I've reserved the date in my calendar. I just have to check with the price of the plane ticket, but I I have for sure the 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 date are reserved for for this. So. Uh, God Fantastic. willing, I'm, I might be able to to just jump on a plane and come, and then we could do uh, like a workshop about <laughs> Tor and and how you run a, a, a node, Fantastic. which I think would be better. You know where we can do a demonstration, 
And we are going uh, on the platform Escape the Technocracy. We are going to publish for free because we think this is really important. We are going to publish the chapter we, where we were discussing about Tor. It's going to be published for free so that anyone can just watch it and, and run Tor relays. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, so that's the plan. Uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, I can come to Monerotopia, but I think we will discuss in private uh, the details uh, on how we make this happen. All right. Yeah, Exelix, um, they're, they're, they're sponsoring the show and they're sponsoring Monerotopia too. They have a, a Copa Monero team. So tremendous thank you to them. And we're going to get them on soon so people can uh, kind of vet them out in the open and learn about their services. They offer very competitive rates. They, you know, don't, don't KYC. It's, it's an instant exchange. There are a lot of them out there right now. Uh, but Exelix is giving back in a big way by supporting this conference. So we appreciate that. Um, all right, man, let's, let's take it away. Maybe, yeah, like you said, uh, maybe keep it po podcast friendly. And then for those that really want to get the most hands-on version of the, of this explanation, come down to Monerotopia and you can hear it live. So take it away, man. Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, by the way, I just posted the link to the website where we we sell resources and stuff, and this is where we will put the the workshop, um, uh, oh, so people can you, your listener you can just share. I don't have a YouTube account, but feel free to share. So it's escape the technocracy dot com. Well, listen, we'll um, uh, we'll put you up on the Monerotopia.com website as an adoption alley sponsor. It's, oh, yeah, 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 yeah you sure. Can come, you know. And so we'll, we'll, we'll have a link to it there. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, so, uh, yeah, Tor. Um, so if you have any question about Tor, you can feel free to ask, ask me. Or I can just, you know, do my small introduction and then we can have a, a, a discussion and where, where you ask questions and we can clarify together. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I would do an introduction. Okay. So um, in, a, in, a, in a short uh, history, the, um, I, I want to go back a bit in, in time. The, the first, like way before Tor, they, they were like mixed network uh, and, and those were created by the original cypherpunk. And the original idea was that you could send emails, right? And you could send an email to a server and then at a random time, which was like a few hours later, it would then send it to another server, etc. And this was extremely complicated to use. Um, you can look for like Mixmaster and Cypher, uh, Cypherpunk Remailer uh, if you want on Google Image to see the, the GUI. And, and it was like you had to use PGP and it was like very cumbersome. And, but those were like the first privacy focused uh, tools that, that were created historically. Um, and they were already back then, uh, what's, what's funny is they were already like issue, like uh, someone posted some material from the Church of Scientology uh, using one of those remailer. And then the Church of Scientology tried to uh, shut down and ask uh, which IP address uh, posted the, this material. Uh, and then this that led, you know, the, to the rise of like end-to-end uh, -end encryption and 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 other things like this. PGP. No, Tor yeah, itself. Yeah. yeah, PGP. Yeah, 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 PGP. But I mean, PGP already existed. It mm, was yeah. not just like it's more the idea of chaining PGP together. Is that you're gonna encrypt three time with PGP, and then every server is gonna decrypt, send to the next one. That's mm. um, yeah. Um, and this is also what, uh, you know, one of the issues they had was also spam. How, how do you moderate a network like this? And this is when Adam Beck came with the very famous hash now proof of work. Yeah. Yeah. Hash cash, Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It, it was hash cash. Uh, now, if we fast forward in, in the early 2000s, the US government had a research project with the Navy to create basically like an anonymous uh, network. And this eventually became Tor. And the, the original idea of Tor was to basically uh, enable uh, to access uh, anonymously websites. The, I don't think there was yet the idea of hidden services. The main purpose was basically to obfuscate who is uh, the sender. And if you look, uh, Tor network is basically three. It's like a VPN, but three times. 
where you know you send to the first one that then send to the next one and then it exits on on the clear web mm -hmm. um and of course with the years there was some kind of harm raised so the the program was was uh, made public because obviously like if you are uh the u.s army or like you run some kind of secret operation and you're the only one using this then it's obvious it's you right so they had to make it public they couldn't just keep like you need other people to use to to provide cover for for what you're doing and i i think this is why they they published it uh now of course uh currently the tracking is way more um i mean th this was like the, the innocence of the 2000 because now you have like fingerprint and and uh, this is why they eventually created their own browser that is hardened uh, to resist. Um, now, the Tor network, compared to a VPN, it's entirely voluntary run. So you do have people running Relay. And the Tor, uh, the Tor project on its own, they do not run any Relay. And I think it's for uh, legal safety that they, they shield themselves. They are just providing the software, and then other people might or might not run it. Um, so as what, what you realize is in many crypto user, uh, use store without even knowing, uh, you know, it's often integrated into wallets and often it's just as a magical button, like online privacy, and you can just toggle it and, and it will route all your connection through Tor. So many people use it without even knowing every day. And... Because now, it's a voluntary. I, I don't want to. Um, I yep. don't want to throw you. I don't want to throw you off too much. Should, should I ask? Throw some things out there or no? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, no. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Just because I know. So t recently, somebody was was at, was telling me that uh, uh, you know on the, they're they're looking for a replacement essentially for for tour for when you're for when you're running a node. Um, that there are some some weaknesses with tour. Well, what what are the? I hear like there's there's recent criticisms of Tor. Let's say like Versi two P or ah. other 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 ways yeah, of yeah. doing things, and um, give us give us the lowdown on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Tor, I mean, this, this was created um, as we said in in the early two thousands, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. it has shown it has shown its age. There is much more sophisticated attack. Um, you now have the concept of a global passive adversary that can basically listen to everything, which was assumed to be impossible uh, back then. There are a bunch of other projects. So there is I2P, which I think is the second largest uh, anonymity network. But don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm not sure about the numbers. Uh, then you have like completely self-contained uh, networks that do not really offer a bridge to the outside that are their own bubble. And you have newer... How about like, how about like NIM? Where, where does NIM fall? Yeah, yeah. So NIM is one of the newest projects. There is NIM and there is another one which I don't remember, but that, that's, that's fine. Uh, so NIM is an attempt to go beyond what Tor, like to improve on what Tor built. And I think they also want to offer a incentive to run a node, like a monetary incentive that you would get their token. Uh, I, I follow them from far away. I, I like what they are trying to do. And I think they want to go a bit under uh, what Mixnet where, you know, Tor, it's a circuit based system so that when you're connected to a website, it's going to use always the same server, always the same three nodes. And then it's going to switch to another circuit. The idea of um, NIM is that basically every packet or almost every packet could be potentially sent by any node, which would help with congestion, which would potentially allow things like torrenting or streaming, which are currently not really possible on Tor. Isn't that the same thing uh, uh, I2P does with the sending, uh, with each node sending uh, instead of circuits, just packet switching? Isn't that what I2P does as well? Um, I think I2P is a bi-directional uh, circuit. 
so that you send with a circuit and you receive with another one. I think that's what they are doing. Okay, uh, but thanks. I'm not, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I mean, the thing is, it's hard to like de dwell too deep into one of those network because none of them are currently used on a higher scale. Like Tor is just the largest and the biggest. And I guess like I have limited the amount of time and for me to dwell into one, uh, you know, I, I just focus on the one that is the most used and yeah, so, so that would be Tor. But no, I think I2P would be. Uh, the bidirectional um, and NIM is really every packet can potentially be sent by any node on the network. And also so, I2P doesn't have, yeah. So, okay, that's that's fair. And like you said, you could do a whole, we could do a whole, hours of talk just on those things alone, I'm sure. So, uh, by the way, do you, do you know, uh, do you know VT Nerd? Are you familiar with VT Nerd in the Monero? No, I, no so I'm he's, afraid not. Uh, he's kind of like, he's, he's the dev that's, that's, I would say like kind of most focused on and, and leading the air in development in, uh, Monero network privacy, right? So privacy on a network level, um, with building things so, like Dandel Dandelion plus plus and, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I2P into Monero. So he's, he, we're, we're trying to get him down to Monerotopia. He was at the first one. Um, but yeah, he's kind of like he—he's somebody that should be that should be highly praised in the Monero community. He's one of he's one of the most important uh, contributors in my in my understanding. Um, I like things like Dandelion Plus Plus. I think our technology, you know, is is a part of Monero that's kind of even like ignored. People don't even really talk about it, and uh, it's yeah, it's it's I think is. Is Monero the leader, would you say, in terms of obfuscating use of the network on a network uh, level compared to other cryptos? Do you have insight into that? Mm, I think yeah. I think what's great about Monero is that everything is on by default and you cannot really change un unless you, you really go into the config of, of your uh, of your wallet, you are not really able to change those default. And I think you also have to think about something like all the cryptocurrency could tomorrow use than the lions, right? I mean, it's, it's just a way, it's a, a very specific way to broadcast transaction. But the, the problem is that if you use it, let's say on Bitcoin, uh, then, okay, you're going to be super anonymous when you broadcast your transaction that comes from your KYC wallet that is very obvious that you sign up with your Coinbase account, right? So it's um, even implementing a technology like this, I think you need the entire package uh, to, to make it really strong because on its own, it's like, oh, yeah, it hides your RP, but what's the problem? But it that, is that's, just... that, was the, that was the, when Francisco was, was schooling me on, on, on Monero, that was the point he kept saying. The whole is greater yeah. than the sum of its parts, right? So you can yeah. implement one or two of Monero's technologies, but unless you're implementing all of them, you're not going to create something as private and uncorruptible. Yeah. And and I think Dundalion uh, is excellent. And we have seen this in, in the slide where basically they had, you know, two two hera of tracking Monero. There was previous to Dundalion, which was kind of like, hard but doable and then the after one which is like walking in the dark forest with uh without light and hoping to to find maybe someone uh using your node uh, and i found it interesting because again on, on its own it seems so uh it seems very frivolous like why would you do that but it yeah um i yeah, so no, I, I think for that Monero, and, and also what I like about this approach is that it doesn't rely on Tor. Like it offers another, because again, if you want to configure Tor and use it with Monero, uh, it, it's a bit harder. Like sometimes it, it require, it's slower. Uh, it might not always work, but with Dandelion, you have a kind of like an okay-ish solution uh, that works out of the box, which, which is really great. Exactly. And uh, I'll let you get back on track. I mean, I guess you basically want to get to the point of 
uh, you know, what Tor is and why, why it's important to support the network and I guess how to do so in a brief, in a brief way. Yeah, so um, Tor is pretty much the currently the only widely used network that provides some anonymity and also helps bypass censorship. And uh, since it's voluntary run, uh, people should consider running nodes to help support the network. And especially, I would say one type of node in especially is um, bridges and even entry points. So if you have a country that decide tomorrow to, you know, uh, censor uh, their, their citizen, the Tor network, like the list of server that are part of the Tor network is public. And Tor itself published that. So they are not trying to hide where they are. You know, you can just go on the project and download the list. And if you want to block them, it's extremely easy. Um, and this, of course, creates issues for, like, it's good for transparency. Uh, and sometimes it's required. But it's bad for users who are trying to access uh, the uh, non-censored internet. So what a bridge is doing is it basically offers a hidden entry point that only a few people know about. And your traffic, when you connect to it, is also obfuscated. Because the other problem is Tor does not hide. Uh, of the fact that you're using it Tor, right? It's a very obvious fingerprint. It's a very obvious traffic. It it looks very, um, uh, yeah. It's it's very easy to 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 know that you're to, that you're using it. But by using a bridge, you have a secret access, like a secret door, that is this first node that is important. And then uh, it just used the normal Tor network and you're, you're, you're back. So uh, if you, uh, there are certain countries now that without bridge, you cannot just access Tor. Like the censorship is so heavy that uh, you need to run them. Now, what happened is obviously the people censoring, they do not want this, right? So they are constantly shutting down those, those uh, nodes, which is why we should run as, as many as possible. Uh, the easiest for people listening now that they can do is uh, if you're using a modern web browser like Firefox or Chrome, just look for Snowflake Tor extension and download this extension on your browser. And it's going to be basically you're going to share your browser bandwidth with someone in the world. That's the easiest way to run. Uh, so I, I know we said we don't want to go into technical, and I, I, um, I think it's good. But what I found amazing about Snowflake's Relay is that it's extremely easy to run, and basically anyone can now uh, run it. And if you're using a node like Umbrel, and hey, Doug, maybe this is an application that you should consider to put on your uh, nodal. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah obviously you I'm should thinking, have... Yeah. Yeah, you should have a snowflake uh, relay and, and a bridge that people could just install in like one click. So that's the, that would the be a fantastic and they, idea. Fantastic. Yeah, idea. We, we have when you run the, when you run the node itself, you could have it in one click run over tour. But uh, yeah, adding a way to essentially support tour in a click would be amazing. Yeah, and um, this way, when someone basically doesn't have access to uh, the greater internet, they will access this uh, this hidden uh, uh, resource, and then they can um, they can uh, access you know uh, what, whatever website was was censored. So this is in short, and of course I would welcome anyone to you know uh, go and and read about the the bridge. Um, I'm still preparing the. Workshop. So for sure, there there is going to be a, a online video explaining all of this on our website, uh, and and then uh, hopefully they're also going to have a, a workshop in person in in, in Mexico. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Man, let's, let's that, make that it happen. Would be the idea. Yeah, you'll you'll really enjoy meeting Devrick as well. He's going to be down there working, being one of the workshop professors as well, and he's very well versed in tour and these things so you'll, you'll enjoy meeting him 
So what, uh, yeah. you know, you mentioned it in passing when you were talking about the different, different technologies, um, you know, that are, are doing similar things. But the fact that Tor, there is no incentive to run a Tor node, do you think that's kind of a fundamental issue that's going to uh, basically lead to, to Tor's extinction in the long run? Given, you know, other, yeah, other I, solutions where, if, you know, there's an incentive for everybody to support the network. Yeah. A direct and, and, you know, I, yeah, I, I, on purpose, I only discuss about the bridges, which are those hidden entry points, because those are very easy to run and you won't have any legal trouble. Now, if you're running things like exit nodes, uh, that's another que that's another question, and there have been people who got in trouble uh, by doing this. And and you know, if you have no incentive, and you can also get in trouble, it, it it's a bit of like a, <laughs> <Yeah>. a very <laughs> a it's like, okay. Where should I? Yeah, where, where should I even <laughs> run this? Uh, and maybe I get you know a knock on the door at at four in the morning, and and um, uh, so. I think it's it's going to be a bit of an issue, uh, you know. So the advantage is, of course, you know they cannot use the samurai. What they use in samurai is, you know, you can say, well, I'm volunteer, I'm just running this out of passion. But at the same time, you know, running the server costs money, it costs bandwidth, uh, it costs uh, things like this. So I'm not a specialist in token economics. But this is why we have NIM, and this is why we are going to see if they can somehow make it work that you have the right balance. I think finding the right balance is also uh, complex. There have been an initiative. I, I don't really know what, what it became, but I think there was an idea of if you put your Monero address uh, in the descriptor of your Tor relay, uh -huh. then uh, they aggregate uh, donations and they would send to the 10 top highest bandwidth of the month or something like this oh that's weird um yeah but i'm not sure what happened i i i'm not sure what um uh, uh the guy did um but hey that that could be certainly it seems uh, like something. they could get in trouble for that though because if they're holding funds from donate a, a donation pool it seems like they could get in trouble for doing that yeah right right it's not that right yeah true true yeah uh, so nice. yeah, um, now I will say a few things. Um, there is here in the comment section someone asking about DDoSing Tor. Um, I'm not yeah. sure if, if people are aware, but um, the Tor spam implemented yeah, about the uh, the spam attack, right? And the solution, yeah, sorry, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I think the, the Tor project they were. I, I don't know. They they probably know more than the public because I tried really hard to find information about the spam attack that happened last year, and I couldn't find any good information about it, uh, which was very exciting uh, for you know like cyber cybersecurity uh, researcher like me uh, trying to understand what was what the hell was going on. But the solution that they came up with is good old uh, proof of work. And they actually used a random X or a slightly modified version of random X. And as far as I know, since it was deployed, it's not really like they didn't really had any major DDoS. So they, they are solution, yeah. Uh, yeah. They are solution to DDoS uh, attack. Now, I know the, I know, for example, like the Haveno seed nodes were under a, de a denial of service attack because of the fact that proof of work was not implemented. And then when they did update the seed nodes to be proof of work capable, the, the denial of service attacks have completely stopped from what I can tell. Yeah, it's, I've heard a lot of report uh, from people deploying proof of work and it just stopped. They didn't even, like they just deploy it. They didn't even enable it, but just like it advertised that, hey, now we have defense with proof of work. And it's probably a huge deterrent because it's like, you know, they could, with a flick of a switch, just enable it and, and, and then stop it. Uh, so I wouldn't be too worried about this. Like, it seems that for now it, it helped. 
another question that web application use Snowflake Relay, like Messenger, really anyone using the Tor browser, if you go and you ask for a Snowflake bridge, you, you're going to have one. So you could, I mean, yesterday when I tried it in preparation for this podcast, I was able to just go on YouTube and, and use it. Uh, so w what happened is when you run a Snowflake, you're going to only share your connection with one or two users. So it's not going to use too much of your bandwidth because, again, it, it, it shouldn't slow down your internet, right? You are sharing already your, your resources. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much, but it's, it's able to, to, to have like around 10 megabytes per second uh, up and down. So it's, I, I think it's pretty good. But of course, it depends on which snowflakes uh, you are uh, connecting to. All right. Now, with proof, with proof of work, um, I've heard, I know Tor obviously deployed proof of work. Do you suspect that other applications such as NIM or I2P or LokiNet or whatever will also deploy proof of work since it actually seems to be working properly? Or do you think they're going to try something else? That's a good question. I mean, potentially, yeah, it's, it's an excellent question. Um, Potentially, if they have tokens, they could also say now it's paid, right? Uh, but you know, now the code has been done and it has shown that it seems to work and it seems that it stopped the congestion of the, of the network. So I would guess, you know, it's just a matter of doing a, a, like implementing what Tor did. Um, the problem with those other network is not many people are using them and because not many people are using them it's also not sure how much anonymity do they truly really provide right and and this is why i'm also you know as someone who is like a an, an an educator i'm reluctant to um advise people using this the thing is with tor we know it works um this, yeah, this is so, why you, this is why you like monero right monero is yeah it's kind of analysis exactly. in that sense it works. Exactly. I'm oh, sorry to interrupt, man. Yeah, go, go ahead and uh, wrap up. Is there anything else you want to make sure you get out today? I... Um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, if anyone is interested to buy one of the course at escape.technocracy, we have a discount code. So uh, the website is escape.technocracy.com. Um, and the discount code is Monerotopia. Uh, so we, we thought this would be cool for, for people listening. Um, oh, but fantastic. of course, I mean, you can, thank you. You can just share the, the website. And as soon as the tour, uh, we, we just need to finish the, the workshop. But as soon as it's ready, we, we're going to publish it. And I'm sure it's going to be great. And people are hopefully going to run more Tor and nodes uh, because this is important. Um, yeah, man. You, yeah, I mean, you, def the, you de definitely yeah. got to come down to Monerotopia. Let's make that happen. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's discuss in pri private and, and see how we, we can uh, do it. Uh, okay. I think you wanted also to, to talk about XMR Bazaar, but maybe we're running out of time and, and maybe it's better to keep this for another time. Well, no, um, let's, you could bring you could bring that up, and then well, let's do. Can you stick around for viewers on stage a little bit? Yes, yeah, sure-ish. Yeah, uh, I can stick go, probably. For, yeah. Go go when you need to, but let let's uh let's run viewers on stage, and we get some people up that want to ask questions. But yeah, if you can just uh maybe tell us your XMR bizarre thoughts, because it does sound like you're working on something cool, so. Yeah, give well, us let's... your XMR <laughs> thoughts, and then we'll run the the viewers on stage segment. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I'm I'm going to try to be super quick. I I don't want to annoy anyone, but so yeah, um, I think you did a, a a great job by creating this website, and and it's pretty cool, and it's one of the best ways that we have to acquire anonymous money, and it it's funny because we are preparing also a course about Bitcoin. And basically, we are going to explain Bitcoiner that the way they acquire Bitcoin anonymously is to go on XMR Bazaar, get XMR, <laughs> and then swap it to Bitcoin. Um, 
but no, it, it's just I I love it. Like it enables anyone to simply uh, propose their their service, their consulting, their their exactly. whatever they are doing. And um, you know, uh, as I think I mentioned this in the intro, but I was looking for grass fed beef, high quality grass fed beef around me, mm-hmm. and like no one was selling this, you know. And yeah. I've met a farmer and started to gain her trust. Uh, showed her how Bitcoin works and now how Monero. Amazing. And you know, you focus on one person, right? You you gain their trust. You show that you're willing to stick. If they increase the price because of inflation, you keep uh, you keep with them. And you know, you're you're not you're not the client of Walmart. You know, you, you cannot really you, you know you have no negotiating power. Will will like. Big big corporations don't really care about you. You know, you're just the, the raw the raw data that then they sell to to those ginormous technocratic uh, um, uh, advertisement and and surveillance company. And you have also to be aware, like most online shop or not online shop, they are surveillance uh, a website that uh, on the side also sell your product. Uh, I worked for a bit for a com- uh, for a, a e-commerce website, and basically the goal there was to spy on people as much as possible. You know, to have them sign up with WhatsApp and and things like this. Now, with XMR Bazaar, you're back into a one-on-one relationship between you, uh, the client, and then the merchant, or vice versa. Exactly. And uh, my idea and the things that I'm trying here to grow the the circular economy is to basically have. Uh, my beef merchant listed on XMR Bazaar that she accept uh, Monero and, and, and Bitcoin, hopefully more Monero than, than Bitcoin. And then to try to grow the circle around, we plan, but this is still, I mean, we're still working with the uh, local uh, regulation for that, but we want to have a small physical store. Where, where, where is it? Where? Where is this, by the way? Can you tell us where this is? Yeah, it's it's in Europe. Uh, okay. That's as, okay. as much. I, I don't want to jinx okay. it, right? It, okay. When okay. it's okay. ready, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll sure. Talk when it's when it's when it's ready, okay. Uh, exactly, but we, yeah. we're still in discussion with with the local uh, 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 government that we can have all the permission to have the physical store. It's gonna be like a, a small self service farmers market, but the idea would be you can get in and you can pay with Monero uh, and and Bitcoin and and. We, we're gonna see how how this is gonna work but it it's a it's a it's a long work you know uh yes, farmers yes. they i will tell you this they they understand you know they understand mm-hmm. what's coming um uh, and they they understand it but they need they need like easy way to do and uh, i don't want to onboard them on binance pay or i, I want that they have a, a, a self-custody from the get-go right so yeah, I, that's the. I, th- I think I think uh, far, far, the, the topic of farmers has come up so many times in the Monero community and and uh, those that are trying to build uh, parallel economies because that is the key. You get farmers on the on board, and you have consumers that are buying from them directly, peer to peer. That that's a that's a large percentage of your daily needs in terms of costs covered by a parallel yeah. economy. So and, and, and in a way where you're getting more quality items uh, than you would ever get elsewhere, right? So it's, it's and, and, uh, and you know tremendous value there. When, when uh, I go to, to this place and I, <laughs> I regularly buy something like half a cow or so, or so, and you know I get sometimes a full breakfast for for my family and myself, you know, and you will never get a breakfast from Walmart. Or Costco or any of those big companies, you will never be greeted as you know. Like when you have this unique relationship, you would be surprised. Uh, we got uh, recently a full, detailed breakdown of every antibiotics that she had to give to her cow because suddenly one of them was sick. Not not that she wanted to, you know, um, uh, uh, make them fatter or anything because it's purely grass fed grass finished beef but she basically told us look we had a sick cow and this is the medication we we gave and we hope you're going to be fine with that but be aware this happened 
and this is a level that is like unprecedented to have like this very transparent explanation of what she's doing. Now she 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 was selling it for fiat, but she's uh, selling it for crypto for me for now a few years, and she wants to expand uh, the the user base by by accepting more people. Amazing. So we we will see how how it will happen. So yeah, this Definitely. is the, the physical. Go ahead. I was going to say, definitely keep us posted, man, as you're working on this and let us know, you know, what resources we could help with. I'd be willing to help yeah, that I, I, any way I can. I mean, I mean for, for now, we need the authorization to have the... So we're going to do it for sure. But then the question is, do we have the physical shop or no? That's mm -hmm. a bit what's now it's in... Uh, awesome. It's, it's in... And, and then at the same time, uh, of course, we, we want to onboard people. You know, this is what I can do locally. Uh, to help and then uh, with online workshop and tutorial then this is my way to share this knowledge with uh, a bigger audience because I cannot possibly you know help every single person one by one that that wouldn't really scale no no no, no. beautiful man beautiful to hear and you know if you're working on it we could assume other people are in other places we know other people are um, I'm going to focus more on that locally in New York after Monerotopia I think the time is now I've obviously tried things yeah. in the past, but I think we're at the point where we could do something like, you know, a reoccurring marketplace that's Monero only, a real world marketplace that happens. Maybe you start even only like once a month, once a quarter and slowly build it up to that from there. Yeah. And, and again, this increased privacy uh, for everyone else because more people are now using it. And, and also yep. it like, you know, this is why to, to maybe like uh, close it down. Uh, uh, this is why I kind of am, I'm a bit disappointed with Bitcoin. They do not support people who do like grassroots adoption like this. They just think by hodling it, yeah, it's going to magically go to insane number. And no, it, it's going to go to magically insane number because people use it. This the, the, is the why. Can, the can, because the it cancer has is, The cancer is fiat and the government's... Uh, control yeah. of fiat and their ability to surveil transactions. And the only antidote to that is something that's completely private in digital form. Otherwise, you're, you're not disrupting the adversary that it was built to disrupt. Yeah. You, you said it with better words than me, definitely. <laughs> Amazing, man. 